In this video, we're going to talk about what a slope is, as it's one of the foundational concepts of calculus. We'll start by looking at these two linear functions and examining their slopes. Let's remind ourselves what a slope is. The slope is a rate of change in the vertical direction. It's the steepness of a function. We use this definition all the time. If you were describing a hill and it was very steep, you would say that it has a large slope. If the hill was not steep, then you would say that it has a small slope. Well, the same definition applies here. Now in math or calculus, we don't settle on descriptions like little or big, and instead we want to be able to quantify this. And we do this by calculating the amount of change in the vertical direction for each unit change in the horizontal direction. So looking at this orange line, what we're going to do is we're going to look at one unit change in the horizontal direction. If this uh, axis is x, we'd call this change in x of one unit from 2 to 3. And the amount it changes in the vertical direction. That vertical direction, let's call this axis y, is going to be changing from 15 to 20. That's a change of 5. This slope is really the rise over the run, the amount of change in that vertical direction over the amount of change in that x direction. So in the case of this orange line, that's 5 over 1, it's 5. What this implies is that if x increases by 1 unit, y goes up by 5 units. If x goes up by 2 units, y would then go up by 2 times 5, 10 units. Let's do this with the blue line. Here, for a unit increase in x, we would have a change in y of from 35 to 45. That's a change if of 10. So in this case, our slope is going to be equal to that change in y over the change in x. For every unit increase in x, y is going up by 10. x goes over by 1 from left to right. y increases by 10. goes upward by 10. So the orange line has a slope of 5, and the blue line has a slope of 10. And this goes in line with what we could already observe. We could see that the blue line was much steeper than the orange line. And that's actually reflected in the numbers, as we see that the blue line has a much larger slope, a slope of 10, versus the orange line, which only has a slope of 5. In fact, it's the blue line has double the steepness, double the slope as the orange line. Now let's compare this to a different type of function. So the function that we just examined is here in the bottom right corner, those two lines. Now what if the lines look like this instead? What are the slopes for these lines? Well, for the orange line here, I can see that x is going up by one unit here. This is my x-axis. This time y is going down. So what we're going to do is say it's going from negative 10 to negative 15. It's going down by 5. So we're going to give that a negative sign to indicate that it's going downward. So the slope is going to be equal to negative 5 over 1. It's going to be equal to negative 5. And this implies that every time x increases by 1 unit, y goes down by 5 units. We have a downward slope. With the blue line, what we would see, that is x goes up by one unit, or x increases by one unit, I should say. It's not going up. It's going across by one unit. y is going down by, it's going from negative 15 to negative 25. That's a difference of 10. So it's going down by 10. We're going to give it a negative sign. So the slope for the blue line is going to be the rise of negative 10, because it's going downward over 1. The slope is negative 10. So every time x increases by 1 unit, y goes down by negative 10, as indicated by the sign of the slope. 
Now this is similar to what we had before in that the steepness is the same. In the previous example, the blue line had a slope of 10. However, this time, because we're going downward, that is given a negative sign. So the slope informs us in two different ways. One is the magnitude of the slope. So the magnitude, 10 and 10, tells us the steepness, the amount things are changing in relation to each other. As x changes by 1, y is changing by 10. And also it tells us the direction of the change. And that is whether it's going downward or upward, and that is indicated by the sign. Here we had a negative sign on the slope telling us that as we go from left to right, we're going downward. Here we have a positive slope because as we're going from left to right, we're going upward. Now hopefully you should be familiar with the slopes of linear functions, but what about with nonlinear functions, such as this quadratic that we see here? So here we have the equation y is equal to 2x squared plus 2x minus 40. We call this a quadratic or a second order polynomial as the highest exponent for x here is to the power of 2. Now as we examine this function, what we can see is that we start with a negative slope. From right to left, it's going downward. Eventually, we hit some minimum value right here, and then it goes back to being an upward slope, a positive slope. Here at the minimum, what would the slope value be? Here the slope is equal to zero. There's no slope. So thus far what we can see is that we go from negative to positive that the direction of this quadratic function changes. And the slope here indicates that downward negative slope to positive upward slope. Well, the slope should also characterize the steepness of the function. Now the steepness is in the magnitude of the slope. So what we can see here is we start off pretty steep. So this would be a large magnitude. The steeper it is, the larger the magnitude. Though the sign, let's be mindful here, would still be negative. And then what happens is it gets less and less steep. So this, the slope is getting more and more shallow. The magnitude is decreasing until we hit a point where the slope is equal to zero. Then we have a small slope that starts to increase again. So then we have a small magnitude again, this time positive instead of negative. And then eventually it starts to become a large magnitude again. So what we can see is that the direction is changing, but also the steepness of this quadratic is changing. So unlike the linear function where we had a constant slope everywhere, what we're seeing with this quadratic is the slope is changing everywhere. Not only is the direction changing, but the magnitude will be changing. And we want to be able to calculate this slope. Trust me, as we go forward, there are some business applications for this. And that's where calculus is going to step in. The study of calculus allows one to calculate the slope. With calculus, we're going to be able to come up with an equation for the slope. And we go so far as wanting an equation because if this is x, what we want to be able to do is come up with an equation so that we can determine the slope at x is equal to negative 2. Determine the slope at x is equal to negative 1 or wherever on this function, maybe at positive 5. But we can see that the slope value would be different for all of these points that I just noted, and we want to be able to come up with an equation for it. And that's where we're going with calculus.